three funny pictures on the same page. So all you have to do is scroll down. You don't have to click anything because it kind of does the scrolling, the continuous scrolling once you get to the bottom. And you can get loads of funny pictures and just reshare them and basically republish them and bring them to your audience. And, and then that, that, that's just a, a lot of fun. I, I just personally find it to be fun. And I, I like when, uh, uh, when other people do the same type of thing. And there's a nice feature on Diaspora, which Google Plus hasn't yet ripped off, um, which is when you get to the end of your stream, uh, when you're waiting for more posts to load, or if you, if you don't want to wait, there's a little button on the right-hand corner of the page which allows you to immediately skip right up to the top, so you don't have to scroll your bar up or press the keyboard. You merely just click, which I think is quite a nice little feature, and it's quite handy. But, I mean, since we're talking about Diaspora now, we might as well stay on the uh, Diaspora and Facebook uh, yeah. topics that we had planned for later. Um, this is this particular piece of news. This is just about Facebook. Um, I haven't really been following any sorts of trends with migration from Facebook. Is that still a, an issue? Is Google Plus still taking? I don't know. Actually, I was wondering the same thing when I was like making coffee the other day because I I remembered that there was some functionality something to do with Gmail migrations or exporting of data, and there were some applications that allowed people to grab. You know, mass collect the details of their friends so they can kind of re, uh, kind of import them into a, uh, another database. Mm. And I, I knew that Facebook was blocking quite a few of these applications, probably for business reasons. Basically, all you have is your friends and they don't want to make it very convenient for you to, uh, to grab this kind of, uh, social, uh, list of friends or whatever. Mm. People associated with you. Actually, it's interesting because in certain websites you can get a list of all your Twitter kind of followers and people whom you follow, and you can you can use these outside services to use the APIs to basically run some queries in the database and try to organize for you a common separate list or something of that sort, which would be very handy. So Facebook has been trying to crack down these things. They might say, oh, it's because of bandwidth or because it's not legitimate uses of the APIs, but and essentially, what they're trying to prevent is what happens now in Diaspora, where you can import your friends uh, once you join a certain new website. And mm. it's becoming it's becoming a very, very attractive point for sites like Quora, uh, where you basically say, connect to my Twitter account, and then it just checks who of your Twitter uh, people you follow on Twitter are actually on the same site and auto-subscribes to them. So essentially, you've saved the step of trying to kind of find your friends again. It's basically finding them for you based on their... Uh, metadata on another site, and they're trying to to restrict the mobility. This shows you why well, all those sites, you know, where you don't control things, are quite can be quite malicious in a way because they try to lock you in in the sense that they say, well, you can have your friends as long as you stay in this club. So they say, well, if you leave this club, you lose your friends too, and we don't want to make it very easy for you to find them again. Uh, and it's not a very social, obviously, it's not a very social thing to do. You know, because cause the reason you, you go to meet your friends is because you want to meet your friends, and they are trying to make themselves the gateway, so the, the friends in between. Well, the BBC have written an article recently on uh, social bots, they call them, and th these are um, bots that are used to sort of farm real Facebook users and abstract information and the personal data from them, uh, presumably with the intent of selling people things. And the BBC in its usual fashion goes into great detail about uh, the saying the dangers of all this and completely misses the point in my view because we, we talk about diaspora and I've obviously been a, a supporter of diaspora for a long time but uh, social bots and I, I very rarely support Facebook. In fact I haven't had a good word to say about Facebook in my knowledge recently. Um, but Social bots and Facebook, really this is a common thing now that we're going to see with all social networks and I think uh, the social bots that uh, are used in, in Facebook to steal people's data and personal uh, preferences and uh, can buying they habits. Still Sorry? Can they steal data? Um, it, well, I'll, you, I'll, still, you still have your data if you want. Yeah. It's, I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think the social networking like the Esper, this was one of the things that uh, I brought up before, and it's the reason why I quote this article. What concerns me about Diaspora, um, the intent of the Diaspora project is fantastic. It's to allow users the freedom of their own data and the freedom to do with that as they please. However, with that and the decentralized way the Diaspora network works is a massive issue with um, bots and uh, Rogue, shall we, say, shall we say, rogue pods, which connects to the Diaspora really, network. You try and I, I would say things like grey hat and red and black hat. Uh, either SEO, if you're being very uh, 
uh, nice about it. You just call it, oh, search engine optimizer or like social networking companies or, I don't know, marketing companies and stuff. But if, if you want to say spammers, it's you have to redefine what spammers actually mean. Because uh, I don't think it falls under the US, what's, whatever it's called, Can Spam Act or whatever, you know, in the States they have certain regulations on spam. So that wouldn't qualify as spam per se. But these are like uh, sock puppets or uh, far, I think link farming is the right word here because they and basically link people around and they create a network that's fake based on uh, people and trying to farm their way into certain rankings and to try and promote the message using that. And, and, and this whole technique is is going to be commonplace in every social networking service. It's, it's yeah, I, I think as much as I'm loath to say it, I think uh, it's, it's certainly not Facebook's fault if I if I dare say that. In that, it's, it's any group of people can be targeted. We get targeted on a daily basis when we're out shopping. Take for example a shampoo, fill in this questionnaire, that type of thing. Um, the BBC goes into detail about how people are um, they're requesting. Friendship from uh, these fake so the fake sites the fake clients are um, requesting uh, for it to be friends with the fake uh, Facebook users and uh, that's how they're getting into people's uh, network and it's really just something that we've seen it's been commonplace I mean look at Twitter in fact one thing I did notice which I'll just drop in now on Identica uh, there's been quite a few adverts recently. Um, which I've had to block. I can't remember what the last one was, but I saw it last night. It was either not Sham. I think it was a loan uh, company of some description, uh, consolidating your loan or something. Um, it might oh. have been Google AdWords. Uh, no, no, this was on the de- this was on the Dentica as a post by a um, by a user. Oh, well, yeah. a, a fake, yeah. And it's not the first one. Uh, yeah, no, they, they had to lead loads of them recently. I heard uh, the record they had was about a month ago. They had to lead about a hundred. Sorry, a thousand accounts in one day. So you do know they, this, despite the fact that they delete loads of accounts and they are actually on top of that, they are uh, still struggling to get all of them because they need sufficient evidence. Mm. And each each case they have to check is this really a person, mm. right? It's and hard, it's, especially with new accounts, it's really hard to judge sometimes. And it's not a criticism of any social network because I think the problem is uncontrollable. I, I think um, no matter what safeguards you put in place, uh, the BBC on this particular article talks about uh, apparently it's 25 friend requests um, will prevent triggering Facebook's fraud detection software. So it's not hard to get around and circumvent the, uh, the, the safeguards that these social networks put into place to prevent this type of behavior. And I think it's an impossible task. Uh, the only thing I would suggest people do is refuse to buy any product that sells itself in this way and make sure you block and report everyone you see and that's really all you can do and I think this time next year when another social networking service is emerging I think we'll be having the same discussion again Um, I don't think we'll ever get rid of it because it's so simple and so quick to target a massive amount of people and even if your return is only 0.2 of a percent it's still worth doing for the couple of milliseconds it'll take you to uh, to do it. So, yes, unfortunately, it's a sad uh, indictment of today's uh, social networking uh, service and uh, one we won't get away from. So that was that. The other thing I want to mention very quickly, Diaspora. Um, the server went down last Sunday before last, which went down for some um, updates and uh, yeah, I think some software. server software. Yeah. And now, there was an outage about today or yesterday. Uh, there was at least I, I'm not sure, I didn't really see it, but I know one of my because it updates automatically every once in a while. I saw something about them updating the server and having like notifications. Sometimes I know they were down at some stage today. Well, I think they've been. I mean, it just is a testament to how uh, Diaspora has now evolved because when the planned maintenance. Uh, started and uh, the Asper went down, there was a lot of talk about uh, the features that were going to be coming in eight hours time. In fact, I was very guilty of getting rather excited about what uh, what the Asper was going to introduce next when it came back on. And unfortunately, one of the developers had to come on and say, uh, no, contrary to rumor, it's, there's going to be no features released today or that particular Sunday. It's going to be in the next few weeks. So we're still waiting to see the goodies that the Asper has on offer uh, as a result of the server update. Um, this, if anybody hasn't joined Diaspora yet and uh, goes over to joindiaspora.com, I'm not sure whether they're accepting... I don't think it's done no. com, is it? Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, it's joindiaspora.com. Oh, um, no, no, no. I, I thought you said join. Then yeah. Kind of diaspora.com is in the site. It's actually interesting. If you go to all the sites, .net, .com, because you'd expect the site to be there, uh, it's all kinds of like park domains and all kinds of very dodgy things. 
Uh, if you go also to like Identica type sites and you don't put it Identica with the Canada at the end, you get all kinds of dodgy websites and I think they capitalize and people are just typing that. Yeah. So. But we'll, we wait with basic breakfast to.